TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett urges world powers to re-evaluate their intentions of reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement with the Islamic Republic of Iran that following the election of clerical hardliner Ayatollah Ibrahim Raisi. Iranian chief nuclear negotiator Abbas Arakshi reveals that nuclear consultations in Vienna have ended and the time for decision-making has arrived. The Islamist Hamas organization voices frustration over progress in negotiations for rehabilitating the Gaza Strip, warning that it will have to re-evaluate its steps forward. <music> Jerusalem re-emphasizes to its enemies in the Gaza Strip that they better get used to the paradigm shift which evolved during and after the recent round of hostilities between Israel and the Hamas-controlled Palestinian enclave namely Operation Guardian of the Walls. Speaking at an annual state memorial ceremony on Jerusalem's Mount Herzl yesterday evening, in memory of IDF soldiers who were killed in the 2014 Gaza War, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett stressed that under his leadership, Jerusalem will no longer tolerate any form of aggression on any part of Israel and would draw no distinction between Hamas and other Islamist organizations which operate in the densely populated territory. With that being said, the newly incumbent Israeli premier sought to reassure the residents of Gaza in particular and the international community at large that the Jewish state does differentiate between the terror groups operating against Israel from within the Gaza Strip and the residents living there who should be regarded as hostages of a brutal and violent terror organization. עמדתנו ברורה, היריבות שלנו היא לא עם האוכלוסייה העזתית. אין כוונה לפגוע במי שלא קם עלינו להורגנו. ואנחנו לא שונאים את אלה שמוחזקים כבני ערובה בידי ארגון טרור אכזרי ואלים. ולפעמים אותם אנשים גם משמשים מגן אנושי מכוון סביב מכונות הריגה. אך באותה העת יכירו אויבינו את הכללים. לא נסבול אלימות, לא נסבול טפטופים, לא נבין או נכיל סוררים. הסבלנות שלנו אזלה. It is important to highlight that tensions have significantly alleviated over the weekend after cross-border attacks by means of incendiary balloons have evidently ceased. Consequently, an Israeli security assessment was held during which a decision has been made for the first time since the end of Operation Guardian of the Walls to enable limited export of agricultural produce from the Gaza Strip to the West Bank and abroad, utilizing the Gaza-Israel-Kerem Shalom border crossing for that purpose. Subsequently, the transfer of goods began this morning. With that being said, the IDF coordinator of government activities in the territories emphasized in a statement that this civilian measure, which was approved by the political echelon, is conditional upon the preservation of security stability. Meanwhile, Egypt, which brokered the presiding cessation of hostilities between Israel and the Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip, is reportedly putting pressure on Jerusalem to make progress on a long-lasting truce arrangement and further called on it to partake in talks in Cairo, scheduled for next week. Separately, according to a report published by Israel's public broadcast Khan, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi was cited as saying that his country is working to rehabilitate the Gaza Strip in full coordination with the Ramallah-headquartered Palestinian Authority. However, following a meeting in Gaza City between the UN Middle East envoy Tor Venislant and Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar, the latter complained over Israel's continued refusal to alleviate a number of restrictions imposed on the Palestinian enclave, including access of Qatari cash, which prior to the recent round of hostilities was reportedly transferred in numerous installments to help alleviate the dire humanitarian situation in the blockaded territory. Sinwar was further asked about the meeting with Venice Lont, which aims to contribute to the Egyptian track 
in realizing a long-lasting truce arrangement with Israel. In other yet related news, the Islamist Hamas organization relayed a congratulatory message to the Islamic Republic of Iran, which it openly hails as instrumental in the battle against Israel for the election of its new president, Ayatollah Ibrahim Raisi. نهني الشعب الإيراني بنجاح العملية الديمقراطية وإجراء الانتخابات الرئاسية واختيار إبراهيم رئيسي رئيسا للجمهورية الإسلامية في إيران ونتمنى للجمهورية الإسلامية في إيران قيادة وحكومة وشعبا مزيدا من التقدم والازدهار فإيران كانت على الدوام داعما حقيقيا وأساسيا لقضيتنا الوطنية والمقاومة الفلسطينية Raisi, a 60-year-old Shiite cleric who is subject to U.S. sanctions for alleged human rights abuses, had been widely tipped to win the contest thanks to the endorsement of Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. It is worth mentioning that turnout in Iran's four-man race on Friday was a record low of roughly 48.8 percent, and there were also 3.7 million invalid ballots that were likely to have been mostly blank or votes of protest. Nevertheless, Raisi managed to win a landslide victory, winning approximately 17.8 million votes out of the 28.6 million ballots cast. I am شک ندارم که مردم حمایت خواهند کرد از دولت قانونیشون برای اینکه منافع و مسائلشون به بهترین وجه انشالله اجرا و عملیاتی بشه. Meanwhile in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett stressed during his weekly cabinet meeting that the election of Ibrahim Raisi constitutes a signal to global powers and urged them to take heed of the regime with which they are doing business. באיראן נבחר בסוף השבוע נשיא חדש, אברהים ראיסי, מכל האנשים שחמנאי היה יכול לבחור, ושלא יהיה ספק, זה לא הציבור בחר, אלא חמנאי רק אפשר להם לבחור, הם בחרו את התליין מטהרן. זה איש שידוע לשמצה בקרב העם האיראני ובעולם כולו בשל התפקיד שלו בוועדות המוות, שנעלו את ההוצאות להורג של מתנגדי המשטר. ראיסי אחראי באופן אישי לרציחתם של אלפים רבים של אזרחים איראנים חפים מפשע. הבחירה בראיסי היא איתות למעצמות להתעורר, איתות אולי אחרון רגע לפני חזרה להסכם הגרעין, להבין עם מי הם עושות עסקים ואיזה סוג של משטר הן בוחרות לחזק. Bennett went on to emphasize Israel's resolve to thwart the Islamic Republic from attaining a nuclear weapon. It is important to highlight that a sixth round of indirect talks as part of the nuclear negotiations in Vienna concluded over the weekend, at the end of which the chief Iranian negotiator, Abbas Arakshi, revealed that the time for decision-making has arrived. We are closer to a deal than any time in the past, uh, but it doesn't mean that we are there. Uh, the remaining job is still difficult uh, and needs lots of, you know, efforts and, 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 and you know, uh, further talks. So we decided uh, to cut uh, negotiations here, go back home, uh, not only for consultations, but this time for decision making. Meanwhile, in the Turkish city of Antalya, at a tripartite Turkish Iranian Afghan diplomacy forum, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif confirmed that significant progress in reviving the so called JCPOA, commonly referred to as the 2015 nuclear agreement, has been made. Well, I think the, the JCPOA negotiations are underway right now. There is a good possibility that we will 
uh, reach an agreement before the end of our tenure. Uh, uh, as, as How the, soon, sir? Uh, uh, well, we, we are supposed to leave office by mid-August. And I think there is a good possibility that we can reach an agreement way before mid-August. So the talks are going good? Uh, the talks are going on right now as we speak. I just read the latest uh, text uh, and edited it that is being discussed in, in Vienna. Just are all major here. obstacles passed now? Uh, well, uh, the text is getting cleaner and cleaner. Asked about what remained to be done, the outgoing Iranian top diplomat reiterated Tehran's demand that the United States must take full blame for all that relates to the nuclear deal. The problem is the United States has to come to the recognition that it was the United States that left the deal with an objective, and that objective was not achieved. Now it is coming back to the deal, so it cannot dictate the objectives that it couldn't achieve through economic war on the negotiating tables. I think that's, that's a cognitive transformation that the U.S. administration needs to make. And I think we are getting there, but not there yet. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team in Meher in Jerusalem to lift up the people of Gaza in prayer for their salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tov, a Shavuot Tov and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.